Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the ultimate monthly meal prep video for you. I'm gonna be prepping a lot of the items that I picked up in my last grocery haul. I have some meat that I need to get put into the freezer and kind of repackage. I have a couple of freezer breakfast options. I'm gonna be making some cinnamon roll pancakes as well as some freezer breakfast sandwiches and then a couple of other just random items that I needed to get prepped. So if that is something that you are interested in, then make sure you keep on watching and if you're new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button I would love to have you but let's go ahead and get into today's video I'm actually starting off this meal prep with getting all of the chicken into my freezer. So I picked up these chicken breasts on sale. I got them for very, very cheap. I got them for $1.66 a pound. So I definitely made sure to pick up quite a few packages. I usually will try to get my meat at the beginning of the month and then I will just freeze it all at one time and I'll take it out as I need it throughout the month. I love when I can get it on sale. It is super helpful for the grocery budget. So when I repackage chicken, I usually do it with one breast in each bag and I will just throw them into quart size Ziplocs. I do make sure that they are the freezer kind and I've never had an issue with anything getting a freezer burnt this way. I always just throw all of my chicken into one bin and then I'll put this one bin into our deep freezer and I'll just pull it out as needed. I do prefer to buy the fresh chicken over the frozen. I just find that the quality is a lot better and it's not filled with a lot of additives either. And then once I'm done with that, I am making sure to sanitize my area really well and getting that wiped down before moving on to the next meal prep item. I picked up this huge carton of blueberries and this will last us for about two weeks when I prep them this way. So what I like to do is I soak them in cold water, I add a splash of vinegar in there and I let them sit for about five or 10 minutes while I move on to the next thing. I find that this gets them really nice and clean and I just feel so much better feeding them to my kids this way. So while those are soaking, I'm actually gonna be taking my creamer and I'm gonna be dividing it into these two mason jars. So I'm the only one that drinks coffee in our house. So I will make this one bottle of creamer last me the whole entire month. Once these jars are gone, that's it. So what I will do is I'll take about half and I'll leave it in the bottle and then I'll take the other half and divide it into these mason jars and then this will actually get thrown into the freezer for the end of the month. Otherwise it will expire before I go through the whole entire bottle. That way I don't have to buy any more creamer for the rest of the month. I had these bananas just sitting on my counter. They were starting to go bad, so I just decided to break them apart and get them thrown into my freezer. I like to use these for smoothies, and I also use them a lot for banana bread. So I will just peel the bananas. I usually will break them into a half or a thirds, throw them in the Ziploc, and then I just pop them right into my freezer. This is such a good way to preserve these, and it takes almost no time. So if you don't do this with your bananas already, I definitely would suggest trying it out. It will save you a lot of money in the long run. Now these blueberries are all nice and clean. I'm just going to rinse them off. I do like to give them a really good rinse just to make sure that there's no vinegar taste on here. I've never really tasted any vinegar though. I've never had an issue with it. And then I'm going to be spinning them out. This is my OXO salad spinner. I cannot recommend this thing enough. I got it probably like a month and a half ago now. And it has been one of my most favorite kitchen purchases that I have made in a really long time. I love it. It works so great for lettuce fruits and veggies I just cannot recommend this thing enough I've seen it on a couple people's channel and it is just amazing I always store my fresh produce in these food saver containers. I'll have them linked down below. They're from Rubbermaid. I just picked mine up at Walmart, but they are one of the best things ever. They make your produce last so much longer and now it's just washed and ready to go. 
Now we are moving on to making some pancakes. So I normally make my pancakes from scratch, but I actually had this box on hand that I needed to get used up. We bought it at the beginning of the pandemic and it was just sitting there. So I figured I'd just go ahead and finally use it up. So I decided to make this whole bag and just have a nice batch of pancakes in the freezer. I'm just eyeballing the amounts here, but you can just mix it up until you reach your desired consistency. I do always like to add just a little splash of vanilla into my pancakes, whether they are from scratch or if they're from the box. I just think it gives them so much flavor. And I really wanted to take these pancakes up a notch, so I'm actually doing them as cinnamon roll pancakes. So I just have a stick of melted butter with about a cup of brown sugar. And then I'm adding in a tablespoon of cinnamon. And I'm just gonna mix all of this together. This is gonna make a really delicious filling for inside of our pancakes pancakes. I put this filling right into this little squeezy bottle that I had on hand. You could also try to use a Ziploc, but I feel like a squeezy bottle is going to work much better for this. Now I'm just spraying my griddle and putting all of my pancakes on there. I do really like this griddle because it's really big and you can make a lot of pancakes at one time. So once I have all of my pancakes on there, I'm just taking that squeezy bottle and I'm doing a little swirl on each of the pancakes. And you guys, these were such a hit in my house. My kids are like hit and miss on pancakes, but they absolutely devour these. So if you want to try something just a little bit different, definitely give these a shot. And they're sweet enough to where you don't even have to put syrup on them, so you don't have to worry about little sticky fingers with your kids. So I definitely will be trying this out again. It worked so well. So I was able to make a ton of pancakes with this amount of batter. I let those cool off and then I just threw them into freezer Ziplocs. And when I'm ready to use these, I will just throw them into the microwave for like 30 seconds to a minute and they will be a perfect breakfast for my kids. Now this month I actually had a bunch of sausage patties in my freezer that I need to get used up so I figured this would be the perfect time to make some freezer breakfast sandwiches. I've made these before and they always go over really well in our house so I figured I would make some more of them. I'm just starting off with cracking about 10 eggs into my 9x13 casserole dish. I do make sure to spray my pan with some olive oil and then I'm just taking a fork and kind of breaking up the yolks. You don't need to whip them by any means but I'm just trying to make sure that everything Thing is kind of well distributed and then I'm just adding on a little bit of salt pepper and garlic powder of course you can add all of your favorite seasonings here but I just kept them super basic once you have this ready to go I just pop it into a 350 degree oven for right around like 15 minutes or so I would say until your eggs are completely cooked through while those eggs are in the oven, I'm just cooking up some sausage patties. I just had these in the freezer so I didn't have to make them or anything. I'm just warming them up a little bit. They were actually pre-cooked ones. And then once those eggs are done cooking, then I will just sprinkle on a little bit of shredded cheese here and pop them right back into the oven for a couple more minutes until all of that cheese is melted. I ended up making about eight freezer sandwiches with this. So for this nine by 13 baking dish, I just cut this into eight pieces and that was perfect for eight sandwiches. Just make sure that you're cutting your eggs to whatever size you want your sandwiches to be. I should mention you can do this recipe with either bagels or you can also use English muffins, which is what I am using on this particular day.
You want to make sure that everything is really well cooled off before you start assembling your sandwiches. If you have your sausage patties and your eggs too hot, then when you put them into the buns, then everything will get a little bit soggy. So I just like to make sure that everything is really nice and cool. And then I'm just assembling all of these. And since the cheese is already on there, it makes it really, really easy. But if you don't want to do the shredded cheese, you could also just do a slice of regular cheese on there. And that would be perfect at this point as well. Now when it comes to storing these, I just wrap them in some wax paper and then I will put them right into a freezer gallon Ziploc and they store perfectly this way. Once I'm ready to actually cook them, I will just take them out of the wax paper, wrap them in a paper towel, and then I will put them in the microwave for about a minute and a half and they come out really good every single time. I definitely would recommend giving these ones a shot, but that is actually going to be it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you. I share tons of cooking content on my channel. I have a new what's for dinner every Sunday, lots of crock pot meals, meal prep, grocery hauls, things like that. So if that is something you are interested in, make sure you're subscribed and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.